and welcome to The Evangelist. Today, I want to introduce the topic of faith. Uh, faith is an absolutely critical topic when it comes to the work of a good witness, of a good evangelist, in communicating to outsiders how it is that they may have all the blessings of the kingdom of God and how they might enjoy the riches that God makes available to human beings through the gospel. And it is by grace, as I've mentioned before, through faith. And uh, I want to describe a little bit about faith uh, as a key to release all the benefits and a, a thing that opens the door to the kingdom of God. Uh, the first thing I'd like to mention is that the quality of the faith, the very nature of the faith, whether it is of any benefit uh, to people, has to do with the object in which it's placed. Uh, it's no good talking about faith as a topic on its own, uh, because faith is always a composite virtue, if you like. It's, it's a, a virtue that involves another, something other than yourself. So that, um, uh, it, ironically, in the modern West, uh, there is a plague uh, that uh, is upon us in terms of uh, trusting no one other than ourselves. Uh, it's a major problem. But uh, <laughs> uh, should we? Should we simply just trust ourselves? Um, it's a common idea. And uh, everyone has a measure of faith. The question is, where is that faith placed? Is it placed in ourselves? Uh, well, we could trust our parents. Um, are they trustworthy? Uh, we could trust our teachers or authors or intellectuals or the media. Are they trustworthy? Uh, we could trust the police and the government, are they trustworthy? This is an important question. Now, there's an idea perhaps that um, the unbeliever has no faith. Well, actually that's not true. Unbelievers have all kinds of faith. They may not believe in Christ in particular, uh, but they have faith. Uh, I can recommend a very important book that's been uh, helpful to me. It's called The Faith of the Unbeliever by Martin Robinson. And this demonstrates clearly, this book, how uh, many people have faith. Uh, and um, everyone has faith, a measure of it. Uh, it's just where it's placed. And that's critical. In ultimate terms, we, as witnesses concerning God, and uh, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, we are calling people to trust God. Uh, we're actually, in particular, calling people to trust in Jesus Christ alone. Um, and the question is, is, do we trust him? And do you trust him? And... Uh, and then the next question is, what do you trust him for? Because often in a temporary sense, uh, you, you could trust him for personal comfort or for prosperity, uh, human benefits uh, uh, for this world. And in that sense, uh, our faith makes uh, God nothing other than our servant for our benefit. Uh, but actually, the kind of faith that... Uh, is called for in the scripture as one that trusts him for forgiveness, trusts him for reconciliation, trusts him for deliverance, trusts him for uh, a, an inheritance that we don't deserve, that we've traded off. And these things, um, uh, to trust him for those things is uh, not to get him to, to do things for us, but for us to in turn uh, allow him to be our master. So the uh, quality of faith is such that there is a surrender to him as master rather than a turning to him as our servant. Uh, this is a, a very important thing. 
Uh, when, when all these questions concerning faith are answered, uh, together they form what's called the Christian faith, if you like, as, a, as an object of study. Um, but I want to talk to you more about other things simply than the object of doctrine or teaching. Um, it's not that forming a doctrine is wrong, uh, but there is a personal call that we're meant to respond to. And we respond to that call and we trust him and we follow him. And that is the beginning point for any understanding about God in God's ways. Uh, and for those that have gone before us, the apostles in the church or the prophets that have put together the Old Testament, uh, there are many things to become aware of concerning ourselves and the world we live in and the nature of God and the challenge of faith. And uh, thus, when we trust Christ, ultimately what we're doing, we're exercising faith uh, in the uh, apostles and the prophets uh, that have gone before us. This is a very important aspect of faith. Now, faith is not simply agreeing with facts as they might be spelled out, uh, uh, whether, you know, in, 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 in terms of testimony. Uh, we can read facts and we can be told certain facts uh, on an intellectual level. Uh, that's not a bad start, uh, but that's not the, the whole story as far as faith's concerned. Faith is, is a demonstration of a, either an active expression, so it's active, uh, or else it's a passive trust where we refrain from action and we rather trust God. We may act or we may trust, uh, or in fact, we may do both. Uh, both these things are part of what's called uh, faith in the New Testament. This means that faith is to some extent experimental. It's testing. Um, and I want to give uh, an illustration of this, a very important illustration, which I think you'll enjoy. And it comes from uh, this book called The Edge of Adventure, An Experiment in Faith uh, by Miller and Larson. This, in fact, is the first book I ever was given in terms of uh, my coming to faith 40 years ago. And it has this story uh, about Desert Pete, and it demonstrates some of the essential ingredients to what I'm describing in terms of faith. The following letter was found in a baking powder tin, uh, and it was wired to a handle, this baking tin, uh, of an old pump that, was, um, that offered the only hope of any drinking water on a very long and a seldom used trail across the desert in the United States. And this letter was inside uh, the baking powder, and it says this, the uh, baking powder tin. Quote, this pump is all right as of June 1932. I put a new washer into the pump and it ought to last for five years. But the washer dries out and the pump has got to be primed with water, otherwise you'll get nothing from the pump. Under the white rock, just nearby, I buried a bottle of water out of the sun and the cork end up. There's enough water in it to prime the pump, but if you drink some of the water first out of the bottle, you're in trouble. Pour out one fourth of the bottle and let it soak into the pump and wet the leather. Then pour the rest of, of the, into the pump and do it with medium pressure and then pump like crazy. You'll get water. The well has never run dry. Have faith. When you get water up, Fill the bottle and put it back like you found it for the next fella. 
Signed, Desert Pete. P.S. Don't go drinking up the water first. Prime the pump with it and you'll get all the water that you can hold. So here the authors mention how clear this is a demonstration of faith. Faith's not so much an academic subject for discussion, he says, uh, or a theological term to be studied from the Bible, but it's something on which our very life hinges. And just so it would be for anyone that came along uh, parched in the desert, desperate for water, finding this note and this pump. Uh, first, the first thing about it is there is an object of faith. And um, it's not a matter of just having faith. You've, if you're dying of thirst in the desert, uh, you're going to have to trust, in this case, some stranger you don't know named Desert Pete. Uh, because you could find the bottle of water and say, oh, I'll just drink that, but it'll not be enough for you to get through the whole journey. You'll need more. Do you trust Desert Pete? Uh, the second part of uh, this ingredient uh, of faith is risk. There's a certain amount of risk involved that the one thing that you cherish, that you need and that you require, which in this case would be water, you're going to have to take the risk of trading off and putting it into the pump so that you could get uh, fully, um, uh, for your need to be fully met. So uh, you're going to have to take some risk whether you're going to trust Pete and pour the water into the pump so that you can get the full amount that you need. Uh, the third ingredient is work. Some people think that faith is laziness or it's license to do whatever you want, that you can relax, you just believe. Well, no. <laughs> In this story, you're going to have to pump and pump hard uh, to get the water that you need. Uh, so that faith is, is taking action as much as trusting. And so the Christian faith is like this. Uh, what we must do is have faith in God and in, especially in his son who's been nominated by God, uh, not only through the transfiguration, but by the resurrection, proving that this is the one, this is my beloved. Listen to him. Uh, our faith is directed toward that person. Uh, in terms of the Christian faith, it's a sense of risk. We risk ourselves into God's hands uh, for the things that we cannot achieve. We cannot achieve uh, forgiveness for sin on our own. This is something that God needs to give to us. And so we take risks of committing ourselves and our lives into his hands. Uh, the third is that there is hard work. The consequences of faith is action. And uh, we are responsible to act uh, afterwards where we indeed put our full weight, our, the full load of our lives is put into the hands of God and we uh, in, do this day by day by day. There's a, an amount of work. Now let me finish with this uh, uh, teaching to say that faith is not irrational. There is, there is, there is a place for reason and faith to work together in spite of the fact that uh, uh, there's forces at work against us in the modern West for many centuries now to uh, produce doubt and to invoke skepticism and to use critical analysis and uh, the so-called scientific method to destroy the whole field of study uh, theology uh, because they've applied issues that are very useful in, the, in terms of this world with physics. The, none of those things are bad as far as applied to physics, but it's a, a grave thing to apply that into the field of metaphysics uh, to the world beyond. No, uh, there is evidence and we can reasonably trust the evidence to support and encourage us to believe. Um, and it it points to Christ that we can put our trust in him. Uh, I point to this book, very important one, Why I Believe by James Kennedy. Um, but as important as that is and as affirming as those things are, uh, evidence alone 
does not solicit the trust that Christ requires of us. Uh, we don't move with faith based on infallible proof. No, for that, that's not faith at all. Uh, we believe uh, and are able to move forward by the grace that God gives us in faith, to move forward into the things that we cannot see. Uh, and so I highly commend to you a life of faith. And faith in Christ will often supersede the evidence that's before us and can move us to trust him even when the evidence seems contradictory. Uh, and if you want a list of a few people who have practiced that kind of faith, you can look no further than Hebrews chapter 11. So I commend to you a life of faith and encourage you on your trek and journey to learn as much as you can about faith. And I'm sure that I'll introduce a few more videos that give uh, a few more illustrations. Please press the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel for The Evangelist. It's been a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks. <music>